It's your boy, Ed the Dread, and you are tuned into the Ed the Dread podcast. Yeah, 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 yes, sir. Welcome back to your Money Mouth Monday. Ah, I feel great. Completely exhausted, completely fried. If you can't see my face and my lips, uh, I don't feel like I got sunburn, I don't think, because it don't hurt, but I definitely feel like, whoa. I was out there today. <laughs> so I surfed about three hours in the morning and then skimmed for almost two hours midday and then surfed another hour right before the sun went down. And, uh, you know, I was out there doing what I love. So today's topic is the importance of doing what you love. <laughs> I mean, I don't, period. You know what I'm saying? Now, with that said, I don't want to uh, get people confused into thinking that I'm saying to do what you love um, at the expense of everything else in your life, right? Um, now, a thing that I think happens to a lot of people later on in life as they have kids and they have a lot of responsibilities and, you know, just a whole lot of things going on in their life is that, you know, all those other things get in the way of the things that they love and they end up not doing those things anymore. So, you know, just again, after a day of having a good old one with the Groms and with my homie Sean out there in Ka'ana Pali, uh, we're just going to talk about doing what you love. Now, clearly I love, you know, being creative right? Through, vo through video, through music. Um, I also love to skate, surf, and skimboard. Uh, I used to really love to play soccer. I mean, I still love the sport, but I'm not really into playing it that much anymore. But uh, when I was younger, the one thing that sticks out to me in all of my childhood is my dad running. Uh, he would race 10Ks, he would race half marathons, he would race marathons. He's ran, I believe, more than one 50-mile race in his life. And, you know, every single day uh, before he worked at night, so before we would have dinner and he would go to work, like, he'd take off for a run. And I'd be, like, in my room as a kid, oh, boom, looking out the window, oh, there goes Pops going off for a run. And then, like, gone for a long-ass time, it seems, you know. And then he's back. Oh, and it's time for dinner. And that happened like my whole childhood up until, you know, my brother and I were old enough that our sports took over more of his life than his sports, right? But uh, other than just seeing my pops run, music being played and my parents really, you know, having a heavy love and affinity for music. Um, my dad had a very large collection in alphabetical order. I would say his records might be one of the tidiest things that was in the house. Uh, so music and just seeing my dad run um, were two things that clearly, you know, my dad and my mom loved. Uh, whether my mom loved him running or not, that's, that's neither here nor there, right? So in my life, I've been able to do all of those sports that I said that I loved, and I currently am one year or almost one year into uh, producing, mixing, mastering, creating, uh, copywriting, and releasing my own music through all digital streaming platforms and shooting music videos on YouTube, right? So uh, I've had the opportunity, thanks to my family, to be able to focus on the things that I love for a very long time. Now, I played soccer like my whole life, right? I started at eight and I played it till about 28 uh, and I coached it from 13 till about 28, 30, I don't know, just a very long time. Um, I was first pushed on a skateboard when I was four. And the first time I rode a skimboard was probably like nine or 10. And then I competed for the first time, uh, I think at like 10 or 11, right? So, uh, I've had the opportunity to do these things that I love, but at the same time, when I was a kid, you know, in the summer, I had a job, although I had to go to practice, I still had a job. I wasn't in school. You had to have a job. So it was a thing right now in my years of playing soccer and ended up playing professionally, you know, I've never said that any job was beneath me, right? So there was a point in my professional soccer playing career that I was a pro soccer player and also working at men's warehouse, 
<laughs> making shirt and tie combos for people to put with their suits. Uh, I was a professional soccer player and checking in movies at Blockbuster. Beep, 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 beep. Back when Blockbuster was a thing. You know, there's thousands of them, and they, like, shrunk down to nothing, and now they don't exist thanks to Netflix. All right? Uh, I also sold gym memberships. I, shit, did a lot of stuff in the gym where I sold the memberships. I was fucking cleaning toilets in that goddamn place, to tell you the truth. So, uh, I've done what it takes to be able to do the things that I love. Now, once I gave up on soccer and decided to move back to the coast and pursue skimming and surfing and those things that I love, uh, there was a point in my life where I didn't have a surfboard. You know, I don't know how this happened. Um, but I was in a relationship, which, you know, is another story for another whole fucking podcast, right? But my two boys come over to my crib and they're like, yeah, dog, like you ain't surfed in a while. And I'm like, okay. You know, like I'm working like two jobs, got like homegirl and kid at the crib and doing all this shit, you know? Uh, and they're just like, yeah, do you even have a surfboard? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, shit. And we we're like looking around the, and, and there was no surfboard. I don't know. Maybe I broke all of them or something and I just didn't go to buy a new one. But you know, as far as things in my life, having a skateboard, having a surfboard, uh, having a skimboard, and you know, having the equipment to make music, having at least an acoustic guitar or an ukulele or something to play music is very important to me. So at that moment, my boy Tom and Hess, they took me to the, I think it was like Bear Wire Surf Shop in New Jersey, and they just put the money up. Or maybe like told me, yo, like, what can you put on it? And I don't know, I throw $50 on it. And they just paid the rest. And got me aboard right there. And they were just like, dude, you, like, get back to surfing. You are, you, you're going downhill, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> but I was really missing a, just a thing that I loved. You know, I was sacrificing being a dad and, you know, run, running this household with this woman. Um, and the a lot of the things that I love kind of slipped away. You know, um, more recently, uh, I, I, as you see, I have a skin board here and I've, you know, I ordered two skin boards, shout out to natural skin board, uh, mainland Mexico holding it down. Right. Uh, but I didn't have a, like a working skin board for maybe like a year. I think, um, I had sold mine to students that were really, really stoked on becoming skin boarders and I was giving lessons to, and then the one that I had just got beat up so bad. I didn't even feel like riding it. I was surfing so much, became a skim or a surfboard coach, <laughs> became a surfboard coach, became a high school surf coach, and uh, you know, just kind of let skimming go on the back burner. Um, so this recent trip to the East Coast, boom, Stoke reunited. And I've been skimming like, I don't know, shit, three, four days a week, trying to surf three, four days a week, and then skate it at a minimum, like once in my driveway, bunch of kick flips, ollies, heel flips, whatever. You know, but the minimum or the idea is that, you know, I realize what I love and like, if I don't do those things, life's not going to be that, that tight. I mean, it'll be tight, but like, it could be way tighter if I did all those things. When I first moved out here, I was doing anything for work. Uh, I washed windows, I painted, I uh, pack, packaged tempeh. I did all sorts of stuff just so I could chase waves. I wanted to ride good waves as often as I possibly could, and I ended up living in an SUV and just parking near where the best wave was going to break the next day, every day, for like three years of my life. But it didn't come without a sacrifice of like the lifestyle you have living in a vehicle, and like I said, just doing jobs that I might not have liked that much. So as I progressed in my professions here on the island, I ended up you know, in teaching. Now, I can't knock it because it uh, it allowed me so many things. You know, I was able to become the head ref, the ref assigner for the soccer. I was able to become a, a surf announcer. I was able to become a high school surf coach. Um, you know, I, I'm damn near paid off my truck. Um, so there's a lot of things that, you know, being at the school have afforded me right? Part of that is being able to surf, skate, and skim. 
right? You know you're on a schedule. You know you're getting paid. You know it's like that, that, mm, 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 mm. And once you paid all your bills, you know how much you got left to make these other things happen. So all of my disposable income was going to purchasing these items and these things necessary to do the things that I love. Uh, and now, after five years of teaching, something I really love, like, like I said, is being creative, making music, doing all these things. Uh, teaching allowed me to surf, skim, and skate all that I wanted to or, you know, close to all I wanted to. But I had to put the music on the back burner. It's incredible how exhausted you will be at the end of a day in a high school, right? Uh, your creative energy at the end of that is is dead. Add to that that you just ref two games after and got yelled at by everybody and or had practice uh, making sure the kids are safe in some conditions that are kind of hectic over here at our home break, right? So my music and my creative stuff was put on the back burner pretty much during these years where I was teaching. Although when I was in HANA, it was you know, one of the most creative times. Uh, and I was in HANA because I was teaching, but in HANA, you don't do much else, right? I didn't have the refing thing. I didn't have the surf coaching thing. It was like, you went to school, you went home, you had the whole rest of the day to just chill and do something. Um, but giving up teaching has now given me the opportunity to make music more, make more music videos, right? Uh, collaborate with artists and just make more stuff happen on that front. So again, the topic of today, importance of doing what you love. Again, not at the expense of everything else in your life, right? You want to find some sort of balance, but also you have to be doing something that you're interested in. If not, life's going to be pretty dull or, or monotonous or, you know, just outright bland so your boy ed the dread uh living what he's talking about getting out there doing what i love please make sure you make some time to do what you love even if it's waking up 30 minutes early in or in the morning and getting something going whatever the case is uh don't give up on your goals don't give up on your dreams do the things that make you happy and you know find a happy balance in between that was your Money Mouth Monday. I am your boy Ed the Dread signing off. Click like, click subscribe. If not, uh, it's your hide. Holla, 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 holla. Oh, we ho, Kako. <laughs>